First of all, man, I want y'all to send y'all prayers to little baby, man. Okay. Uh, recently, uh, he was allegedly seen <laughs> taking a commercial flight. Which, by the way, I I don't see a problem with him taking a commercial flight if that was him, right? But you know, obviously, people are saying, "Damn, what's going on with him?" Because people are usually expecting artists of his caliber to be flying private. Again, I don't see a problem with it. I do know that people believe the lyrics so much that we look down on on these celebrities when they do regular shit, right? Like, yo, he's not sitting in first class. Man, you know, sometimes I, I got to think about it and do the math, right? I know how much this man gets paid. I know when he goes to perform at a show, he's pulling in $800,000 or better. Maybe for whatever reason, he couldn't get a private jet that day to go somewhere where he has to go get a bag. Okay, cool. He bought a thousand dollar plane ticket to get on Spirit or wherever, but he goes to pick up nine hundred thousand dollars. Is he losing? Are we supposed to make fun of him? Nah, that sounds like that man just profited eight hundred ninety nine thousand. That's a smart man to me. I can't knock him for this. I think sometimes artists pigeonhole themselves with the bragging about I'm so rich, I'm so rich. You won't catch me in this. You won't catch me in that. And I think that's it. it kind of brings like warranted ridicule, but. To be honest, it's smart, right? It's smart. Like, if you ever think about traveling for these artists these days, it costs a lot. Yeah, you're getting paid eight hundred thousand, but then you got to book a jet to and to and back. That's a hundred thousand. So now your eight hundred just turned into seven hundred. You know the taxes already need half. So really, it's three fifty that you got to pay a manager. That's like three hundred left. Then you got to pay this your assistant, your DJ, the that you're leaving this shit with two hundred thousand. But the thing that said it on the contract, you say you were supposed to get goddamn eight hundred, nine hundred. Hey, if you could save some uh, cost, I'm not gonna knock it. And um, shit, I, I don't think this is a reflection on anything about his lifestyle. More than, hey, maybe it's the most, I don't even think affordable. It's the most viable option to get to wherever he want to get to. Okay? Yeah. Drill. Exactly. I know the nigga got it. You know what I mean? Like, we're not talking about like a nigga. Remember when, when, when Bow Wow was doing the Bow Wow Challenge? Bow Wow had showed up to court like months before saying he only had $2,500 in his checking account. So like, you know, which by the way, he was capping. He was capping to not pay more child support, but at least you could connect that story to that story and be like, damn nigga, you only got 2,500 left. Now you're in, in coach and spirit or whatever. Fine. Cool. Uh, and by the way, he was flexing like he was in a private jet too. Okay. Anyway. Uh, but beyond that, he did show off his car collection. Look at my boy. I don't know if he showed it off just to, uh, let people know he's still that nigga. Somebody going to say, did he get these cars by doing the double reverse Oreo move at the white parties? I don't know. But really what I wanted to talk about, and this has to be studied. We have never seen artists fall from grace or just seem so much out of touch than Le Bebe. Lil Baby released another snippet of him supposedly previewing a new song. And let me tell you this, man. I don't care how many fire emojis 100 emojis bullseye emojis you put on this shit is still don't make people think differently but listen to it if you haven't this song might have might as went the price just went this shit sound like the other one and the other one and the other one and the other one and the other one what is this guy doing Yo, who's in the studio with, with Lil Baby these days, bro? Anyway, uh, this this kind of like surprised me. There was 5,000 comments. There was 5,000 comments or 4,226 of people just saying, yo, baby, bro, like what the fuck happened? Look at these comments. Yo, man, it ain't moving me. Sound like the same songs he's been making. Man, he made this shit 30 times in 2020. Somebody said, finally, Lil Baby made the same exact song he made the last 40 times. Somebody says, sounds like the last 20 songs. Somebody said, bro, I just need to make amends with Gunna. Somebody says, yo, nigga talk like he Scooby-Doo with all the two. Somebody said, good God, this nigga suck. About to read this in sequence. None of these niggas going to tell him either. Yo, he's surrounded by so many yes men. Y'all was comparing this man to Wayne. And by the way, we were comparing him to Wayne. I am one of those people too. 
Bernie Mac, rolling over the grave, man. Bernie Mac, rest in peace, a legend. He's like, what the fuck is this, man? Kodak Black, the only artist of his generation where every single song is fire and don't sound the same or use the same flow. Somebody said, bro, why is everybody hating on Lil Baby now? Can someone explain how fast he fell off? Uh, okay. Somebody said, these yes men are dead wrong. Okay. There's actually, and somebody's actually asked me to even watch this. Let me... And apparently this is, now there was a time I would oh, just say, well, you know, these guys are aging, but it's not even that. Like, he's lost it. And I don't know who the yes man in the studio with them that keep telling them to put out these trash ass music. They don't got confidence part of in it. one song no more. You keep putting out two and three songs at a time, hoping you'll catch one of them and not one of them is hidden. When are we going to really talk about this? Generally speaking, they say what goes up must eventually come down. But in the case of Lil Baby, who once looked to be in pole position to replace Drake, it seems like things are spiraling out of orbit at an alarming rate. For a window of around three years, the rapper lesser known as Dominique Jones had more momentum and combined goodwill than any other artist in the field. Commended by old heads and seen as the leader of the new school by his contemporaries, Baby might not have meaningfully entered the game until 2017, but he wasted no time in becoming one of the biggest names in the culture. And after a A hey, chat. You know how we, we could get this nigga, uh, Lil Baby, back on track, man? Lil Baby, man, you got to apologize to me in the whole chat. And I'll come to one of your little dice games and we'll get, we'll give you the inspiration to make some good music, bro. Ever since Lil Baby crossed me, he ain't made a good song since. Stellar mixtape run, the release of 2020's My Turn, wasn't just critically acclaimed and commercially lucrative, but had one of the most fitting album titles we've seen in a while. A number one record that came complete with a modern protest anthem that took him to the top of the charts, Baby was at the vanguard of the trap movement. And before long... By the way, and I've said this too, and I know I'm like cutting into to this dude's documentary. Uh, we're going to watch it. So this was another pivotal turn for me with Lil Baby. He... You know, obviously some people wanted him at that time to go to J. Cole Kendrick route where he's like this, you know, spokesperson for black plight. And clearly he's like, nah, nigga, I'm making trap anthems, turned up shit. Like, let's get these shit popping. Like, I want to be in the clubs. You could do that. And I think there's a medium where I think he could have existed. But he shied away from anything to do with that type of realm, With which that was a bigger picture, by the way, if you don't know. Here's what that represented. It's not about like being this woke rapper type of shit. It represented to me substance. I keep telling y'all, the thing that Lil Baby's been exposed for, that Gunna is getting praised for, Gunna's new album was talking about something. Hey, I've been through a lot the last 18 months. Here's what I've been through. This is what I thought. You got a chance to hear the music Yes, sonically was moving, but you know it had substance, that content. Lil Baby, when he rapped about even this, it felt like, okay, there's some substance and content there. If I told you about Woe, Right On, um, On Me, um, the rest of all these Lucy's and, and the majority of tracks he keeps dropping... Other than the hook supposedly being catchy or you're thinking it's going to just be a catchy song, there is no substance to it. And I think that's why people are so, they're saturated with the sound because number one, you know, at, when it was working, he flooded the market on some like young boy shit. But he never balanced it out with substance. So now we know this nigga is just, is basically just a bunch of, BS and on, unless we get him on a song that's actually hitting like he's probably going to catch a melody sooner or later like it's impossible that he hasn't caught like an emotionally scarred type record like in two years like it's fucking impossible like I don't even know how this exists he if he's in the studio every night he has to catch one infectious undeniable song soon and for me if I was him I, I gave two remedies man start doing more features and if you and start making some songs about substance, bro. Like, bro, talk about some shit that would make people know you. I don't know. I, I be trying to root for him. Long, he was receiving the kind of plaudits that are usually reserved for veterans of the game. Do you know you one of the biggest black men in the world? Sure. To me, you the hardest young. I Yo, that nigga fell off as soon as he sat with this bum ass nigga right here. This is this nigga right here exudes bum energy. Y'all know this nigga right here? You probably don't. But anyway, 
the moment that le -be -be sat with this nigga, never was the same, bro. I'm telling you, you got to protect your energy. You sit with a bum, you catch bum energy. You hang with dogs, you might catch some fleas. I stamped it. Suddenly, Baby was on such a pedestal that he found himself performing at the FIFA World Cup, something usually only reserved for megastars, putting Baby in front of the eyes of two billion televisions globally. But while Big Loon spoke of his current prominence and the position that it granted him, there are now concerns over Lil Baby's staying power, as due to the combination of persistent factors, the public that elevated him are now begging him to stop rapping. Once seen as a reliable source for undeniable club bangers, Lil Baby now stands accused of falling into the familiar trap of getting comfortable and milking his sound, all the while refusing to alter his sound or respond to the criticisms that he's receiving. Back at the outset of his career, Lil Baby, who never envisioned himself as a rapper until he was coerced into it by Young Thug, was as focused as they come. Releasing seven projects in the space of just two years, Lil Baby evaded distractions and kept working. Along the way, he refused to be lured into petty beefs, even when everyone tried to pit him against the baby over similarities in their name. So many a lot. tried to like go that way with me, but I always heard it from day one. When it came, yeah, I ain't gonna lie, I, I miss Tourette's little baby. Yeah, I miss that baby. You feel me? I miss the. I miss. I miss that. That's the baby we miss. Short bus baby. You feel me? Came out and he blowed up, and then it was like he the baby. No, little baby. He don't sound like me. He ain't trying to like, like kick my swag. He ain't just the baby. It's enough money for both of us, as you see. Possessing the kind of shrewd mindset that most rappers would benefit from, Lil Baby stayed locked in with his craft, flooding the market with new music, and becoming such a safe bet that even the biggest stars such as Nicki Minaj and Drizzy solely relied on his sound to boost their EPs and singles. At the time of his peak, Lil Baby's sound was so undeniable that many respected critics expected him to be the next Drake, and eclipsed the man that put him on with Yes Indeed. There was a time when a Drake feature uh, helped a little baby. I think right now Drake might need that little baby feature. Let's be clear. <laughs> Yo. This is why Drake is so great, man. Like, you know how many times niggas thought that Drake needed another nigga? All for Drake to outlast that nigga and watch that nigga. Play this. You know what Drake won't do right now? Collab with little baby. <laughs> On his bucket list of niggas to work with? He's like, yo, that nigga's falling off and falling fast. Let me not go save that nigga, okay? <laughs> When, 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 when Lil Baby was hot, he'd be like, yo, let's get let's get on song. Let's get on uh, Yes Indeed. That nigga can't find one? <laughs> Drake probably changed his number on that nigga. Like, yo, nigga, we ain't got nothing to talk about right now, bro. A lot of the Drake records, at least of late, haven't really taken off. Fast forward to 2023, and not only does it not seem like Lil Baby has any chance of overtaking Drizzy, but there's a concern about him maintaining the success that he's currently riding on. Fresh from dropping a snippet like 350, which is essentially just a rehash of everything he's done for the past four years, Lil Baby is facing heat from his own fan base, notably Kaisenet. While not directly calling out Lil Baby, skillfully sidestepped commenting on the song itself and instead focused all criticism on the production. I'm not even joking, the beat's about louder than him. No, 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 fire the producer. Bro, why is the beat louder? With some fans admitting that, I think it's time we start having that conversation in regards to Baby's fall off. Combined with canceled tour dates across the nation, it's not a great time to be in the 4PF camp right now. So how do we get to the point where Baby's magic is wearing off? And what can be done, if anything? Well, for starters, let's broach the issue that he had in terms of selling tickets. In July, it was revealed that Lil Baby had canceled a series of shows on his It's Only Us tour, which saw Baby had venues that tend to have capacities of around 15,000 to 20,000 people. In essence, it's the kind of venues that someone like Drake, Cole, or Kendrick, the big threes, routinely sell out. Left with no explanation in terms of why the shows were pulled, fans immediately assumed that it was low sales that led them to be unceremoniously canceled. But while this was the most overt example of Lil Baby not being a draw, the warning signs were there even during his peak. Hot on the heels of their collab project, The Voice of the Heroes, Baby and Lil Durk launched their Back Outside tour. Staged at a time when fans were ravenous for shows after lockdown, it was immediately assumed that, by way of their combined hype, these shows would easily sell out. But, as academics would reveal on the Flagrant 2 podcast, Baby might have overestimated his own hype. He's trying to do arenas about 10,000 to 15,000. You would imagine it's Baby. Yeah. They say his tour is doing bad. You'll never see him post that his tour is sold out. It's not selling that much. Alongside acknowledging that Jack Harlow opted for smaller rooms and was consistently selling out, Baby may have later posted that the tour actually grossed 15 million, but not selling out ultimately hurt his brand. Because unfortunately for artists in hip hop, optics are often all that matters. So once fans unanimously think you've fallen off, it's almost impossible to regain momentum. Man, Chance the Rapper got it bad. 
Chance got it bad, man. I haven't heard much about Chance. Like, Ch he's trying to drop a couple songs, but, man, Chance was also one of those people. You, you know, so before Baby was compared to Drake, I remember being on Everyday Show. This is 2017, and, and, and the conversation was, especially after how he, you know, did amazing on Kanye's album and he just dropped uh, uh, C3. I think a lot of people were looking at this guy to be the guy, the next one to run, run it for 10 years. It ain't work, bro. Regardless of the music. Take a look at someone like the baby, for example. He's arguably dropping the best music of his career right now, but now that the public view of him has turned, it'll always be reaching a diminished audience. In terms of how this factors into Lil Baby, this can be seen in the reaction to both 350, Crazy, and other recent snippets that he shared. Although they don't sound drastically different from anything he's released before, the response has been one of absolute revulsion from his fans. In terms of recovering from this, it's a delicate balancing act. Currently, fans are seeing in real time that it could be overcome through Baby's former collaborator, Gunna. Within the space of dropping his new project, A Gift and a Curse, Gunna went from being labeled a snitch for taking a plea deal to suddenly being welcomed back into hip-hop's good graces without cosigns from any rappers. As to how this happened, well, that actually does come down to the output to a certain extent. As while Gunna advanced musically on his new project and made something compelling, Lil Baby has remained stationary. I listened to the project and I said, hmm, this is interesting. Keep in mind, QC pretty much froze everybody on the label and allowed Lil Baby to keep dropping singles every four to six weeks up until the release of this project. Song after song after song after song after song, which might have been good. I believe that led to watering down the sound. Lil Baby has a very noticeable cadence. His rhyming scheme, the way he drones through a hook is very noticeable and it's very replicable. It's the reason why we think he's making the same song over and over and over and over and over and over and over again he dropped all of those and then right after announced an album and then at that moment for whatever reason he dropped the worst versions of him trying to make those same songs again here we have all the issues stemming from Lil Baby's latest project, It's Only Me. Following the love that his previous album received, topping the record was always going to be difficult. But during a release day interview with Angie Martinez, Baby downplayed the weight of expectation when it came to surpassing my turn's success. I'm not even in that same space no more to even like compare it. But no pressure to live up to it because people love that album. Not like pressure to live up to it because I'm not living up to that album. That was just what I had dropped. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to like live up to Everything I do, if, you, if that makes sense, that would be me thinking small. I'm on some way bigger and better. Eager to paint his upcoming project as a departure from the past, Lil Baby's press tour implied that the next record coming down the pipeline would be full of depth that we haven't seen from him before. I feel like my music more um, listening. You gotta listen to what I'm saying. It ain't really too much to just shoot him up bang bang or super catchy. Kind of guy just like real. Sh Not saying I don't say nothing about shoot him up bang bang because that's real too. But for the most part, I feel like you gotta just listen to what I'm saying and understand. It. When it was released, It's Only Me did outperform my turn in terms of first week sales. But that's about the only way it beat his previous album. As for starters, this apparent new level of introspection in his bars was completely missing. When you're even looking at Lil Baby and the way that he actually forms his rhymes, you'll notice that from one line to the next, there's no logical continuity. He'll splurt out something random and follow it up with something that has nothing to do with the previous line. So he's not setting himself up for any punchlines on here. That hook to Hey, it's the catchiest Thing on here bro yeah. nothing sticks nothing is addictive the same way that you got addictive melodies on songs like emotionally scarred for example in the previous album this is a major regression from baby a record which was widely panned for its repetitive sounds critics were quick to point to the fact that he fell off with the production too the production choices on this project are pretty bland too very thin trap beats with mild 808s and hi-hats and snares that are basically emaciated they're so Ugh, lifeless. I'm actually kind of surprised to see most of the writing credits on these tracks uh, mentioning at least a handful of people. If I didn't know any better just listening to the quality of this record, I would have assumed this whole thing was thrown together by a skeleton crew of Lil Baby, a couple of producers, and maybe an engineer. On top of the fact that these tracks were somewhat lacking in creativity, what also needs to be factored in is that to a certain section of his fans, they had garnered an affection for him that was left unfulfilled. When Lil Baby dropped the bigger picture at the height of the BLM movement, he quickly found himself with his very first Billboard number one hit, suddenly giving an empowering track that was completely outside of his usual sound, Lil Baby earned himself a bunch of new fans. But when it came to feeding this new audience, they've been neglected. And even though Coach K claimed they all stuck around, it seems like that was temporary. 
As opposed to leaning into his new role as an outspoken activist and stepping territories that even Drake hasn't seen, Lil Baby has arguably gone the opposite way and is now rubbing shoulders with billionaires like Michael Rubin and Robert Kraft. According to him, he's simply acquiring game, but it has diminished some people's ability to root for him when he's constantly chasing the bag rather than feeding them with his artistry. What have you learned from those guys? I learned a lot. Yeah, ask questions. They know answers to questions we don't even know about. They 10-year-old kid know that, but they couldn't tell me nothing about the streets, though. Hanging with billionaires who were infatuated by hip-hop culture while he gunners a physical education? It's unsurprising that Baby wants to learn the ropes of business, considering that he's already been talking about his exit strategy from rapping. I don't want to be an old rapper. Really? You know everybody says that. I just always had that thought in my head, like, I don't want to be no older rapper, like, mm -hmm. 35, 36. While this could be understandable if it was just a simple side mission, some images from Baby with the Billionaire Boys Club suggest that the relationship isn't as focused for Baby as he made it out to be. Pictured in what academics described as hugging in the Oreo position, there's a sense that he's treated like a novelty Reverse by Oreo. while ignoring the negative comments might have worked at his peak. There's tangible proof that he needs to switch his approach, and according to Act, it starts with his recording process. I heard a story about Lil Baby. I've never been in the studio recording with him ever, by the way. They said when Lil Baby's about to record, he usually kicks out a lot of people out of the studio. He don't like to record in front of a lot of people. Secondly, when he's recording, he never wants the recording to be played out loud. He wants to keep it between him and the engineer until it's like finalized. That sounds like your creative process isn't maybe helped or even you're hell bent on doing what you want to do. Fair. I, hey, listen, you know, as much as. I agree with that video, and I've said uh, myself, yeah, Lil Baby has taken a few steps back. He's not producing or performing to the levels that we once put him at or we anticipated he should be batting on that average. I, I think he's been here before. He's been at the position where he didn't deliver, and then he delivered afterwards. I'm just watching to see what those steps are going to be. I, I always keep bringing up, I think it's the year uh, 2020, I believe. Whatever album he dropped then, I think it was in the same year as Meek Mill's album. Uh, was that Championships? Maybe it was Championships or Wins and Losses. I don't know which one it was. There was a lot of steam heading up to that project for him. And that project didn't hit like um, My Turn. He came back with My Turn. And um, actually, was that the right year? Maybe it was 2018. Maybe it was 2018. It's 2018. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry. So it's 2018. So 2018, he didn't deliver. And you got to remember, his whole 2017 was like straight crazy. From the freestyle to like, you know, uh, all those mixtapes, even him and everything he did with Gunna. Like people were looking at it like this is the new run. It was like that crazy run Thug was on when Thug was with, uh, remember the Rich Rich Gang, like the tour, that album that came out of it. Remember he did a, uh, well, we're talking about the uh, little Baby now. He did an album with Gunner, we're like, oh, this is crazy, right? So we're expecting all those things to kind of come to fruition, and it just never did. It just never did. So, yeah, Street Gossip was the album, exactly. So that happened. We didn't really see the um, benefits of it, but then he came back with My Turn, and My Turn was exactly what we had hoped or thought he could do. The thing is, with My Turn, he then also had a string of other great features and collaborations that we thought the momentum was going to continue. And then once again, because that album to me is a certified classic, My Turn, it put us back into thinking he's about to go into rarefied air. And every time people hear me like discuss whether it's Lil Baby, Drake, um, who else? Most of these guys, like even, even, even Youngboy, I'm discussing them using a barometer of them being the top of the game i'm not talking about them like they're average artists i'm talking about Lil baby as he's supposed to be in the top three he's supposed to take the throne from drake he's supposed to compete for, for the throne if i was just talking about him like a regular old rapper from atlanta i wouldn't even I wouldn't even say anything like this about him because I wouldn't have that expectations. But when you drop music and create expectations, we then kind of have to weigh you differently. Okay. Uh, yeah. By the way, again, just to wrap it up. And last thing I'll say on it, little baby definitely fell off a bit, but he can come back. He got to do features. The sound is too monotonous. We're tired of your every song because of your rapping pattern. Here's the thing. 
when Lil Baby first came in the game, that little nasy, I mean, I mean, like all that shit sounded great, but he's not even someone like a Drake. He's definitely not someone like Wayne, definitely not even someone like Future, not like Nicki or any of those people in the sense of he doesn't know how to play with his voice. So his voice comes across very similar every single time. And when you can't use, which by the way, you know, your voice is an instrument. When you can't really use your voice, like for example, you know how many times you've seen Drake change to a different intonation of his voice? Cardi does it all the time. Cardi has like this deep voice, then he goes to this high pitch shit. He he plays a lot with his voice to come with different flows and different cadences and overall give us a different sound and effect. When it comes to Lil Baby, Lil Baby is kind of, it almost, every time he starts a verse, it's, it depends on if he's going fast or slow, it sounds like he's going to give us the last verse with the same cadence we've heard. So since he hasn't gotten to that point yet, Right. And by the way, I'm not going to lie. Like, you know, I think if we, if we think about some of his standout hits is when he's tried to stray away from that similar, yo, just ra like his version of rapping, but also like melodic flow. When he's gone to like a close friends where he's damn near just basically singing on the whole thing. Damn it. When he's he's song on the shit, that's a hit. Right. But how did he get that hit? He had to get out of that pocket of, yes, you could rap. And by the way, I've never discounted the fact that he could rap. The boy got bars. But. Right now, he's over here just fill, um, filling in a rubric. He's filling in a blueprint to what has already worked, except people are tired of it. So if I'm if I'm him, first thing we're going to do, we're going to get you collabing with some of the great artists. Now, here's the thing. Not the Dirks of, like, today, right? We don't need you with Dirk. We're going to need to put you with some mega artists on some spot looks where, like, you get to do what you do best. You get to come in. Knock out a couple, like, damn near features, right? You get the second verse or you get the opening verse, you fucking kill it. Everybody's going to be back on it. I'm telling you, it only take about three really hot features where niggas know that shit word for word for niggas to be on your dick and niggas say you got next. Like, that's really what it takes. Let's be honest, right? You get, like, three of those. Keep in mind, got to come on collapse because what happens is these days every hook by him sounds like the last hook. So don't let him do no hooks. Let him just rap. He can rap. Cool. Once you get him with a couple of those songs out, you're going to have to come with a lead single. Stop this whole, you're just dropping songs to drop songs. Now, here's the thing. It works in making money because he's a streamable artist. And th this is where the streaming era has fucked up so many artists in the game. Because a streamable artist, right, they're incentivized to drop music consistently. That's even where we get into the young boy, like, fiasco. Young boy is paid to drop music as consistent as possible, right? Him dropping an amazing song. And, you know, him either taking time to cultivate that song or him actually curating and waiting a while or picking and choosing what he drops isn't as lucrative as just spamming. Like, dropping anything is makes more money than dropping selective shit, even if the selective shit is hot. So, again, but for me, if I'm if I'm the coach and I'm trying to fix uh, what's going on with Lil Baby, I got to get the, the buzz back to where it's at. So, it's, okay, the features, then I got to get him on a hit song. We need a hit song we're rolling out. He's not going to drop two videos at a time. Two videos, you're too unfocused. We get it. We want to drop one song. We need to put you with the big dogs. I say try to pull for Drake. Him and Drake, one song. Uh, I don't, again, I'm pretty sure Drake would work with him. I was playing earlier. I'm pretty sure Drake would. But you need him and Drake. Um, I, I, don't, I haven't seen him and Nicki with that, that, that like chemistry. But like maybe a him and, him and Future. I don't know, like something where get somebody who's really good at making songs and get you in a position where you could win. They got the hook. You got the bridge. You got two two verses. They got one verse. Hit song. That's what you need. Roll that one song out. You feel me? Let those chill for a bit. And then obviously you're going to have to start creating an album. And creating an album is not it. First of all, all them yes men in the studio, fire him. Get him out of there. You need producers, executive producers. Dare I say, you're gonna have to like, you know what, you, you know what, um, you know what, baby has to find. He has to find his forty. He has to find um his no ID or something like that. Like you, he needs someone that production wise is gonna bring him to a different level and bring him to a space where the music, 
right? Where the music that he's coming up with isn't just some shit meant for the club, meant for the niggas who got a section. It's some shit with a little bit of substance, with a little bit of depth, but still it's hot. You got to lock in with someone. And by the way, it might, it might even, might not be a nigga that's from Atlanta. You know what I mean? It, shit. You know what I mean? Obviously, I, I would say personally for like say 21, I think, I think that's Metro. Like when they get together, they have some type of synergy that brings Savage's music to a different level. So Savage and Metro is kind of like that. We got to find that for baby. Because when you're getting, when you're getting clowned or you're getting, um, you know, people are saying the production was weak on the album you dropped after your classic album. That there's no, there's no like, there's no excuse for that. There's no excuse for that other than be lazy, right? He also might have to get out of his comfort zone a little bit. He gonna have to lock in with a couple of these people. Shit, nigga, go to Hawaii and lock in with Kanye for three weeks. Something might come out of it. Yeah, he's gonna waste the time a lot, but you you might get a song that's end up on his shit. He might give you a brilliant song. Kanye's one of those guys that you could do that with. He got to go lock in with some people, man. Like sometimes people, like sometimes after you've been, after you've been super feeding people bullshit that took low effort. When you realize they're tired of it, you have to step up the production. You need to just like mix it up a little bit. So that's what I would say. Go get that nigga to make a real album, right? Something with some depth. Reach into pockets and also personal shit that he could put forth through music. Have him play to his strengths. Have him avoid the things that are monotonous. And I think it could work again, of course. And when I mean work again, work again where he's having that run. Where people are like, oh shit, yo, he's on every hit song. Oh shit, and his song is going crazy. You know what I mean? So, uh... <laughs> Tank says, who do you got uh, act Lil Baby or YB in a versus? Wow. Lil Baby or YB in a versus. Mm. That's a good one. And the answer that I would give you off rip without getting too much off track and discussing this is going to be a boring one. Depend on the crowd. Right? Like, if, if we're talking about a, a bunch of street niggas, that street niggas that be in a club, I think Baby got it. If we're talking about, you know, a more multifaceted crowd, I think YB got it. Because I literally think that Baby got about 20 songs that are just, we partying. Like, yo, it's lit. Like, yo, pop them bottles, we good. It's turn up, nigga. He makes, like, yacht music. Like, yo, you on a yacht, jet skis out, chicks in bikinis, everything's lit. Yup, he got it. Why be more more delicate, um, more diverse musical palette? And you know, if if we're talking about if we don't know what the audience is, if we don't know who the audience is, and I see a lot of y'all saying YB, and, and trust me, I should know this is no bias. Both these things don't like me. I would probably still say, um, I would say. Lil Baby wins because Lil Baby's hit songs have been some of the anthems for the last <clears throat> six years. Like, it, unless you're a Youngboy fan, there's probably a handful of songs. If maybe, I don't think, if unless you're like a Youngboy fan, there's probably not three songs you know word for word <clears throat> of Youngboy. You don't have to be a Lil Baby fan. But if he performs, there's like four or five songs that if those songs drop, you know his part word for word. Why? Because you've just heard it so much. You've heard it in the club, the radio. It's played everywhere. You just know it. Do you get what I'm saying? So outplay. You see, you're talking about something different. You're saying, act. YB is 100,000 or 1,000 times better. I'm not talking about who's better. Right? We're not talking about who's better. We're talking about in a versus who wins. And a versus, the ultimate thing that will trump all in a versus is hit songs. Like, for example, French Montana versus, who did he go, uh, he went He went versus someone in versus. French Montana versus, who did he go at? It was him versus Tory Lanez? Yeah, it was him versus Tory Lanez, right? Didn't they do a versus? Like. French French is going to win, right? Like, French clearly is going to win. Now, I think people have even said French could go at Rick Ross. 
on paper, you're like, hell nah. Rick Ross is a better rapper. At least to me, Rick, Rick Ross is a better rapper. Like, Rick Ross is really solid, bro. Like, I fuck with Ross as a rapper heavy. Even though I fuck with, you know, French too heavy too. But what helps French is that, bro, the nigga got songs like Unforgettable. Pop that. Like, he has certain songs that, my nigga, even if he's just a hook, if it's his song, you hear that song, bro, come on. Somebody said YB got more hits. Lil Baby got bigger hits, though. You have to remember, <clears throat> it's a versus. There's only 20 songs. Who got the biggest 20 songs? I'm sorry. I think Baby was. Like, the nigga's going to be playing radio shit. He's going to play Drip Too Hard. And, uh, like, are there a lot of songs in Youngboy's catalog that could beat Drip Too Hard? Of course. But who would that win against? A Youngboy fan. Like, put like this. Drip Too Hard versus Lonely Child. <clears throat> I'm a YB fan. Lonely Child. Like, what? Lonely Child, one of the best songs ever made in hip-hop to me. To a regular hip-hop consumer, nigga, Drip Too Hard was like a number one song. That was a way bigger song than Lonely Child has ever been. The fuck? They're going to vote for Drip Too Hard. You get what I'm saying? <clears throat> See, somebody says they only know Drip Too Hard. Exactly. Exactly. Somebody says, Ack, Baby doesn't have 20 hits. Are you out of your damn mind? No way you guys said that. All right, see, see now y'all turn, turned me into defending Lil Baby now. I'm going to show you. I'm going to name 20 songs right now. Give me a second. Man, this is disrespectful, man. Hold on. Are y'all trolling me? I think y'all trolling me, right? All right, I'm trying to pull up the Spotify thing. Uh, all right, I don't know. Whatever. But he, he has 20 years. He has 20 years. Of course, Youngboy has more songs. Of course, Youngboy has a lot of really dope cult classic songs. Absolutely. Um, yeah, but it still doesn't matter. All right, cool. 